I can't believe I watched the whole thing. I just, I can't believe I watched the whole thing. And I'm not talking about the series. I mean, I don't have a death wish or anything like that. I'm just talking about season one. Uh, hit the button. Let's get started. <laughs> Hey there, hi there, ho there, Andrew here, the horror host of Generations X, Y, and Z, Inside Davis Manor, with a review of Fear the Walking Dead Season 1. You know, the season that sucked. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on, I don't, I can't really say uh, about the other ones, because I haven't seen the other ones, but it sure did start off bad. So yeah, this is by supreme demand, obviously, this isn't my decision, no, no, no. No, I stopped after two episodes. I thought that was enough. But you wanted more, and I'm here to give you more. Oh, man. I'd like to start off, though, by thanking a few people uh, that helped me get through all of this. And that would be the patrons of the channel. If you like what you watch on this channel, I would ask you to consider becoming a patron. It is the best way to help this channel grow and... Uh, if you think that I am bringing you value uh, to uploading these videos and you watching and being entertained, then let me pause for self-promotion. You can go ahead and click the link above, or you can go ahead and click the link down in the description or at the end of the video and learn more about becoming a patron of the channel. It's a pretty cool thing. Uh, you can earn a lot of uh, stuff like uh, getting rewards, like free uh, merchandise. Uh, you can get a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Check it out. See what the rewards are. See what our goals are. All of that other stuff. But now I'm I'm postponing the inevitable, and that is my review of season one's *Fear the Walking Dead*. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, this season. I keep on thinking to myself, how how did this season get greenlit? But it's I'm really thinking not this season because it makes complete sense. The Walking Dead was a hit show. Well, and still is. But, I mean, at that time, when Fear the Walking Dead came on board, whew, Walking Dead was just firing on all cylinders. So, of course, make a companion series on the off-season of that show, a hit show, which should easily make tons of money. That's what Hollywood is. I mean, you tell a story and you get paid to do it. I'm not knocking that. What I am knocking is how did they greenlit six? How did they greenlight? Greenlight? How did they greenlit? I can't even speak anymore. How did they greenlit season two when season one was still going on as bad as it was? Or they were like, you know what? It's bound to get better, Joe. So just let's go with the second season, okay? And and I haven't seen the second season yet. But from what I've been reading in the comment section, I'm not really looking forward to it. Because why? There's a whole bunch of episodes. That's why. Now, I'm, I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep calm. I know I'm not doing a good job so far. Because season one was a garbage heap. It was so bad, I was looking for Janus in the background. <sighs> trying to, trying to, try to be calm. Keep myself cool. So let me pause for self-promotion. Go ahead, click the link above. That is my review of the pilot episode of Fear the Walking Dead. If you have not seen it, please go ahead, check it out. It's humorous because I'm having a meltdown. So I won't go into my thoughts of the first uh, part of the season because that's already been done. I will sum up episode one with one word, and that was potential. There's potential there. And that's me being optimistic. After the second episode, I added a few words to that word potential, and that became a phrase. It was called lack of potential. 
And let me do another pause for self-promotion. You can go ahead and click the link above. And that is my review slash rant on the second episode of Fear the Walking Dead. And how I promised I was not going to watch this show anymore. So what was that? That was like three years, almost. That was a pretty, pretty good promise. And the only reason, well, two reasons. Morgan is in season four, and I like Morgan, and because you guys really wanted me to do this. I think you guys like to see me get upset. I think that's what it is. And this show, I swear, this show is going to give me an aneurysm. I can just feel it. I can, I can, I can, I can feel flames on the side of my face. Um, now, I'm not going to break down each and every episode like I broke down the first couple of episodes in this season because I can't do that many rants. <coughs> the throat hurts already. I'm losing my mind watching the show. Now, the cool thing, six episodes. That therein lies the positive of season one. There was only six episodes. I, as opposed to what, 15 coming up? 13, 15, I don't know, 20? It could have been 50 for all I know. <clears throat> so, in the first season, in anything, they try and dump a lot of information on you. Try and, you, know, you try and learn and absorb, get into the universe, whatever it is. You need to learn a few things. And they only have a handful of seasons to do that. So, what did I learn? What did I learn in the six episodes a Fear the Walking Dead Season 1. I will tell you what I learned. I hated everybody. Every single character, except Tobias. I really liked him. Why was he only in two episodes? I hated everything about this season. I hated everybody in the season. I hated the people that you're supposed to like. I hated the people that you're supposed to hate. I hated everything. And the people that you're supposed to hate, it was like the military. Which I really think was a poor move, mind you. Uh, I, that, that has been a trope that has been done I don't know how many times. We're here from the government, we're here to help, and they go and screw things up because they're an antagonist, or they're just incompetent, or they're both. So what do they do here? They make them antagonists and incompetent. You know what would have been cool? What would have been cool is if you got the government, okay? The government gets there. They know what they're doing. They got a, a plan down. They have the contingency. It was like they knew this was going to happen. They are moving like a well-oiled machine. Everything is working and then it falls apart. Yes, the heroes of the military fail. Wouldn't that be something? That would, I mean... That's got to be a lot more nail-biting. That's got to be a lot more explosive, intimidating than just seeing military guys hitting golf balls, waiting for phone calls, shooting unarmed civilians or something like that in other towns, you know, the humane cleansing or whatever they were calling it. I was in a fog by that time. Seriously, if you promoted the military, okay, to be the best that there was, you know, and, and doing what they're doing, Okay, and somehow it still failed. Okay, somehow the military could not stop the zombie apocalypse from happening. Wouldn't there be just some more gravitas to, to the situation? Wouldn't it be like, wow, things are dire? But no, 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 no. Let's let's not let's not get that. No, no. The antagonist sucked in this season, which is why one of the many reasons. This season sucked. There were hardly any walkers. I mean, yeah, there was more action at the end, like the last two episodes of the season, which makes me think, oh, um, maybe that's where they put the budget in, you know? Because there was no walkers. There was like, there was hardly anything in the beginning of the season, which... Drove me nuts. And again, if you haven't seen the second review, I do a little compound math with zombies to explain 
the average death rate in Los Angeles and how many walkers there would be by certain um, many days. Just a natural causes people dying. Not car accidents, not shootings, not suicides, nothing else. Okay? Not to mention that if every one of those walkers bitten or infected somebody else, how many thousands of walkers would have been walking around? But we get a you know, straggler here and there in the beginning. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm so lost. I am so lost with everything. There, there were hardly any walkers. And, and the antagonists were, are, they're supposed to be, the walkers and the military. Because they chose the military. Okay. What the crud. Before I get into the protagonists, let me talk about the, the military. Just one more time. Because it's... I, I had heard this online, and I just thought, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe people are getting a little oversensitive, you know. They were, they, uh, AMC and, the Walking, and Fear of the Walking Dead, they, they couldn't be dismissing the, the, the military like this, could they? They couldn't possibly do it. AMC should know their audience pretty good. I mean, that's what I was thinking. The audience is not a bunch of liberal art majors with useless degrees. It's, it's rural America. People that can relate to Daryl Dixon. You know, rednecks. You know, gore hounds. Fans of the macabre. Politically incorrect people. You know, my type of people, right? Side note. Let me... I, I actually Googled, uh, for a joke, pointless liberal art degrees. Because uh, I was going to uh, do a joke. And... Um, I got a full page on Google telling me how my useless liberal art degree isn't useless and how I could make money with it. But the internet is not slanted at all. No. So, I would say the majority of the audience is or has family in the military. I'm one of them. And Fear the Walking Dead has the chutzpah. That's a big word. To make the military look like jerks. So who aren't the jerks? Who are the heroes of Fear the Walking Dead? Ha oh, ha. I can't believe how transparent it is after I watched the first season. The heroes, everybody. Drum roll. We have a high school English teacher. Who, by the way, beat up a military guy later on in the season. You know, and was shocked that... He got so violent on himself, or whatever. Give me a break. Travis, you suck. Um, the other, another hero. A school guidance counselor. A high school student that was accepted into Berkeley because she was so smart. And a drug addict. That's the heroes? Are you serious? In a zombie apocalypse, we got a, an English teacher, a, a counselor, a Berkeley, soon to be Berkeley student, and a drug addict. That is the, those are the rah rah people. Those are the people that are going to, you know, live in the zombie apocalypse and, and survive. Give me a break. It won't last two days. But somehow, they've been lasting seasons, I guess. <sighs> I, I I I didn't know the actors, okay, uh, when they came on board for the show. So it kind of helped me believe that they were the characters that they were. Sometimes you can watch a show or a movie and you go, oh, I know that actor. I've seen him in this, that, and the other thing. So it kind of made it a little bit more believable for me because I was like, okay, that's that's these people. But the problem with all this was is I didn't care about them watching them. And they couldn't care about each other. Why would I care about them if they don't care about each other? By the way, I didn't care about them. And the supporting cast, they weren't any better. I mean, I loved how they slid in the only person that I knew, Ruben Blades. He plays uh, Daniel Salazar. Okay, Only character, only actor, uh, only person that... Celebrity, whatever you want to say, um, that I knew. And I like him. 
So I'm like, oh, okay, I'll like Daniel. No, 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 I don't like Daniel. No. Well, I mean, he's he, he worked for a, a gang or something in El Salvador that was directly backed by the CIA or something like that. They had to torture people. I don't know what it was. Uh, you know, so it... it because they were directly backed by our country, it makes our country look bad. You know, El Salvador is, is fine, you know. And what did he do? He, he he tortured people while he was in that gang or group or whatever it was. And what does he do in, in the show? Ah, uh, yeah, he tortures the military bad guy. Yeah, okay. We'll go with that. Sure. Why not? I... I noticed... How some of the characters in the show really didn't care about the soldiers. They're like, like the soldiers were stormtroopers, faceless but not faceless, you know. And how like all the soldiers were jerk lunkheads, you know. None of them had any personality. I mean, if they did have a personality, it was they were a jerk. But they didn't have any good personalities going on. And if a walker somehow. Got somebody of them that was in the military, or somebody that was some type of point of authority. It's okay. He was asking for it. Whatever. Come on, people. I mean, who? who I'm afraid to look to see who wrote this stuff. I, I, I really am. I don't know who the writers were. I purposely didn't look at the writers because I was like, you know, if I knew that they were one of the writers from The Walking Dead and some of those episodes stunk, I didn't want to be biased. So I just watched. I also noticed how some of the problems in a Fear of the Walking Dead. <laughs> so one of the problems, some of the problems. There's a lot of problems in the Fear of the Walking Dead, okay? But th this, this one I didn't really touch on uh, in, in my prior rants because it was only the first two episodes. I didn't have the other four to go on, okay? But it was... The walkers weren't really a threat, okay, for the overall season. They were practically non-existent in the first two, okay. But it is fear, the walking dead. Well, you can't fear if they don't show up. You can't fear them if they're not a threat. I... When you don't have anything in the first two seasons... And you try and, or two seasons, sorry, two episodes. And you try to make it up in the last two episodes. It makes me kind of go, well, they were trying to hold on to their budget. They were, you know, they were saving it all up for the season finale. You know, like all out war. Oh, gosh. Um, the long is short. I, I, I know I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm going on on this. There's just so much that that is just irking me. But the long and short of this show is that it was dead on arrival. And that is not a pun. That is serious. Somebody should have looked at the whole spectrum of this and went, You know, we screwed the pooch on this one, gentlemen and ladies. Equal opportunity. We need to reset this. Let's kill some people. Let's bring in some new characters. Let's do a little bit of backstory. I don't get it. I mean, in the first six episodes, they 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 marketed this. When civilization goes down, it goes down quickly. It breaks down, whatever it is. They did not show that. They showed a family basically in their own home like it was a FEMA camp. And we show, oh, these characters, they just complained to each other and they all had attitudes and the drug addict is stealing morphine from a bedridden guy uh, is it, who there was not one redeeming character except for tobias like tobias but he was only in two episodes and i went back on the imdb to look to see if he ever came back nope look the actor up what is the actor doing nothing really why is he not in season four I don't know. Season four apparently is a reboot of this uh, this whole series. Things are changing. People are dying. 
stuff is getting serious, and it makes me look forward to seeing season four. I am going to try to get someone to start a petition to bring Tobias back in. Tobias, the high school kid that was wise beyond his years. He was the little Yoda of Fear the Walking Dead. Knew what was going on. Was great for exposition. Why? Because we knew what was going on. And he could spout out some stuff and we'd go, He's right, that Tobias. There's no way that this should have ever gone to a second season. It shouldn't have. Not without a, some major overhaul. Uh, but it, apparently it did. It just went and they just kept on going. They wanted to make money and they wanted to rehash a tired old model. Something that they had already done. They could have gone innovative. They could have challenged the norms of the zombie genre. Did they? No. Instead of going... From a white family in Georgia. They went with a Hispanic family in California. And a weaker family at that. You would think that they would have gotten a more more close-knit family or something. Because Rick and Lori, you know, they were, they had issues. <laughs> they had issues. You would think that this could have been like the, the Norman Rockwell family. You know, Ozzy and Harriet keeping them together. No. No, we got to have, you know, there was a divorce and the divorcee and the, the ex-wife's over here and we got to split families and stuff. You know, yeah, okay, I get it. That's what families are like nowadays. But nobody liked each other. Everybody kind of gave each other the stank eye. I know I gave them all the stank eye as I watched. Yeah, that's when my eyes weren't rolling in the back of my skull, looking at my brain going, why are you doing this? The Clarks are a terrible family. Not even on par with the Grimes. If you put the Grimes, the Grimeses, is that right? The Grimeses. If you put Rick and family <laughs> against Travis and his family, and I know Travis's last name isn't Clark, it's Mahawabababa or whatever it is. I can't remember what it is. But everybody else is, is Clark, so I'm saying Clark. The Grimes would take the Clark's lunch money every day. Agree with me or not? Put it down in, in the comments. I know I'm on something there. I feel like I'm on something after watching this season. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I, I don't know. I, I honestly have no idea how this show has any redeeming value whatsoever. So do you agree with me or disagree with me? Go ahead and leave a comment down below. And remember, like, share, subscribe. Plus, hit that bell icon so you get notified the moment I upload. And I will see you in the next video.